SpaceX has sent shockwaves through the rocket industry by making a shocking change to the Starship's second test flight. The company has decided to try a new approach that could help make the rocket stronger than ever. Let's talk about this new approach and what benefits it will yield for SpaceX. SpaceX has consistently left us all in awe and wonder over the past two decades with its ability to shock and surprise us whenever it makes changes or upgrades to achieve its goals. Recently, SpaceX made a decision that sent ripples across the globe, particularly catching NASA off guard. They have decided to land the Starship into the ocean, a move that deviates from their well-established practice of prioritizing cost optimization and vehicle reuse. This approach has been the cornerstone of SpaceX's unique operating style when compared to other companies and organizations. The question that arises is, why has SpaceX opted for this unconventional method for the next Starship flight? Before the establishment of SpaceX, the aerospace industry, primarily represented by NASA, adhered to a conventional approach. They used vehicles only once for missions, with vehicle parts or stages often discarded into space, crashed into celestial bodies, or dropped into the ocean without any consideration. This approach, as we soon realized, was exceedingly wasteful and incurred costs that could soar into the hundreds of millions of dollars. However, the aerospace landscape underwent a seismic shift when Elon Musk founded SpaceX in 2002. SpaceX emerged as a trailblazer, fundamentally altering the aerospace industry by making vehicle reuse and cost optimization their hallmark. This shift set them apart from other companies in the field, from their very first vehicle, the Falcon 1, to their latest creation, the Starship, SpaceX maintained a common thread, the emphasis on reusability. Irrespective of the vehicle's purpose or mission, reusability remained a core principle. Consequently, SpaceX directed significant attention and resources toward the development and enhancement of systems for landing and reuse. SpaceX explored various landing methods, including terrestrial landings, landings on drone ships, ocean landings, and, notably, the Mechazilla catching system within the ambit of the Starship project. The distinction between NASA and SpaceX can be attributed to several key factors. NASA, established in 1958, has long served as the foremost agency representing the US aerospace industry in various space races and endeavors with other nations. Over the years, one noticeable difference in their operations has been the relatively lesser emphasis on vehicle reuse compared to other aspects. There are a few underlying reasons for this discrepancy. Firstly, NASA operates as a government organization. As such, it doesn't grapple with financial concerns to the same extent as private companies like SpaceX. NASA's funding is predominantly provided by the government, which affords them a level of financial stability that private enterprises may not enjoy. Consequently, they do not face the same financial pressures or the need to compete aggressively to ensure their survival in the aerospace industry. Additionally, NASA's primary mandate revolves around research and the continued development of rocket systems and spacecraft. Their mission is primarily focused on advancing technology and knowledge rather than competing for market share or profitability as is often the case with private companies. Furthermore, NASA's role as the standard bearer for the United States aerospace industry is pivotal to understanding its approach. The agency's mission is intrinsically tied to maintaining the nation's leadership in space exploration, and the fierce competition among countries adds a layer of national pride to the equation. In this high-stakes race, being the first to achieve milestones and secure glory is paramount. In this context, there is little appetite for dedicating time and resources to research and develop landing and reuse systems. Consequently, many of NASA's historic vehicles, such as the Space Launch System, SLS, and the Saturn V, were designed with a one-time use in mind, rather than being engineered for reuse in subsequent missions. In sharp contrast, SpaceX operates under a different paradigm. As a private company, it must rely on self-generated capital to fund its endeavors. Consequently, money assumes a paramount role within the company as it essentially serves as the lifeblood that sustains its operations. Moreover, the contrast between NASA and SpaceX becomes even more pronounced when considering their underlying motivations. While NASA primarily engages in the space race to uphold national pride and secure a leading position for the United States, SpaceX's battle is one of business and competition for its very existence. In the world of private enterprise, financial sustainability and growth are paramount. Without the ability to maintain financial viability and continuous growth, a company may face imminent collapse regardless of its aspirations. This stark reality underscores the necessity for private firms like SpaceX to prioritize saving and optimizing costs to not just thrive, but merely survive in an intensely competitive environment. Hence, SpaceX places a significant emphasis on vehicle reuse and cost optimization in all its projects, and this commitment extends to its ambitious Starship venture. Starship is a colossal spacecraft with a paramount mission to enable humanity to reach Mars, the sheer scale of this endeavor highlights the importance of cost-saving measures. However, recent revelations have taken many by surprise. 
SpaceX has opted for a rather unconventional landing approach for Starship's upcoming orbital test flight. They won't be reusing Starship using their Mechazilla system. Instead, they plan to send Starship stages splashing down into the ocean. This plan has left many, including NASA, astonished. Here's how it's set to unfold. Once Starship is observed from orbit, it will soar for roughly three minutes. Then, the booster will separate from Starship and make a controlled landing in the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, the second stage of Starship will continue its journey, climbing to an altitude of approximately 150 miles, or about 241 kilometers. After reaching this height, it will commence its descent back to Earth. During the descent, Starship will execute intricate maneuvers, including the belly flop maneuver. Gradually, it will decelerate and approach the ocean surface in a vertical orientation, eventually plunging into the water. The anticipated landing zone is in the vicinity of Kauai and the Hawaiian Islands in the Pacific Ocean. This entire process is estimated to take around 90 minutes. So, why did SpaceX opt for this alternative method instead of using their Mechazilla system, which they have already developed? Well, the decision can be attributed to a few key factors. Firstly, the Mechazilla system, despite being in existence, has not yet been tested in a real mission. It was only present during the attempted flights of S-24 and B-7. But these flights didn't reach completion, so we haven't witnessed the system in action. It needs further testing and upgrades before it can be confidently relied upon for an actual mission. Secondly, the location of the Mechazilla system is significant. It is situated near tank farms and various other structures at Starbase. Experimenting with a new landing method in such a densely populated area carries inherent risks. Any mishap or error in the system could potentially lead to catastrophic consequences, including significant damage to infrastructure. This is a scenario that SpaceX certainly wants to avoid at all costs, especially at this stage of their operations. In the upcoming flight, SpaceX's primary objective is to thoroughly assess the efficiency and performance of Starship. They seek a safe and reliable option that allows them to closely observe every aspect of Starship's operation, particularly the critical landing phase. It's worth noting that SpaceX had initially planned to conduct such tests during Starship's first orbital flight test in April. However, unexpected issues arose during that mission, necessitating a change in plans. Now, all eyes are on the second orbital test flight to deliver the data and insights they need. In this context, opting for an ocean landing is likely the safest choice. Such a landing method does not demand the same level of precision as the Mechazilla catching arm. The vast expanse of Earth's oceans, covering three quarters of our planet's surface, provides SpaceX with ample options for choosing a safe location for Starship landings. This choice prioritizes the safety of people and property, especially in the event of unexpected failures. When Starship descends, it's akin to a human making a jump from a height. And for safety, you'd want a reliable mattress to cushion the landing. What better mattress than the ocean itself? Its vastness ensures that Starship can land practically anywhere in the ocean without posing a risk to people or other vehicles. This allows SpaceX to concentrate solely on observing and analyzing Starship's operations during these crucial phases. Furthermore, landing in the ocean offers distinct advantages, particularly in terms of preserving prototypes. Even in the event of incidents, a fully intact prototype can be retrieved from the ocean, making it easier for SpaceX to thoroughly examine and analyze it. Through careful observation, analysis and research, SpaceX's engineers can gain valuable insights that lead to further improvements and upgrades for Starship. These iterative refinements are instrumental in enhancing the spacecraft's reliability and performance, ultimately contributing to the success of future missions. What do you think? Is SpaceX making the right choice by deciding to land in the ocean? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.